Hello, so I'm continuing off my last video. I'll just get the lights for better contrast. So why has our weather gone crazy? You know, why, why are we getting summer conditions on the east coast of the US right now? Um, why is Europe going into a deep freeze? Why did we come out of a deep freeze? Why did a city like Denver uh, go from um, go, go from close to zero Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the space of 40 hours. You know, why are we getting, why do we get these huge uh, warmings, very, very rapid warming, very, very rapid cooling? And the, the main reason is the jet stream is passing. You're, it's taking you from an area of a trough where you're very cold to, an area, to a ridge where you're very warm. So I just showed here, you know, here's where we are this year, 20 degrees warmer than normal. Um, this is in the Arctic, um, north of 80 degrees. So take the latitude of 80 degrees, go north. That whole region of the Arctic on average is 20 degrees Celsius warmer. And you can compare it to other years just by clicking here. And you arrive at this data set by going to just Google Arctic sea ice graphs. This is the, 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 the splash page here. And if you don't, if you just go and click on the particular graph that you're looking at, so in this case, I was looking at this guy here, I brought up this. Okay, so let's look at the Arctic temperatures. So, so this is an excellent site for great graphs and they're up to date here. If you just go up here, Zach Lave's Arctic sea ice figures. Okay, so that's what we've got here. So here's where we are, the sea ice uh, daily mean Arctic temperature. Um, this is freezing degree days. Um, okay, so you know the the ice in the the ice freezes at minus one point eight because there's a lot of salt. Sorry, the water in the Arctic Ocean there's a lot of salt. See, it's seawater. It freezes at minus one point eight. So if you take the difference uh, between minus one point eight and the temperature, multiply it by the duration, work it out into into freezing degree days and you can see that we're much colder here although in 2016 2017 we were even lower still okay uh, this is just another these are anomalies this is the actual data and if you take the anomaly from a, so so do a subtraction from a mean okay then you get this this is this year this is uh 20 uh, 16 to 2017 over here. Okay, uh, Arctic temperatures. Um, you can see how Arctic temperature anomalies are enormous. Um, okay, uh, there's all kinds of good data here. You can go research areas here and Arctic sea ice extent and concentration, for example. Um, you can look at what particular, so here's where we are. Uh, right here okay uh, actually this is 2017 is this line this is where we are right now here we're lower than than all previous years okay for this time of year so there's lots of stuff here this is the minimum this is when the maximum is so here we're, here's where we are right now so in 2000 in 2015 this is when sea ice hit a maximum in 20, 2007 it was delayed a bit and so on, but it's generally, so this is March here, beginning of March, so there is a lot of spread here because there's a lot of noise. Is this a maximum or is this one or is this one, right? In this case, it would be right here. Okay, so where are we going here? Is this gonna keep going down? Is this gonna come up and be somewhat respectable? Um, okay, so we're, we're, things are different here. Now let's have a look here. Um, I just wanted, so this is also, you can click on this from Arctic sea ice graphs. This is a sea ice sickness. Um, now it's projected forward. Okay, so this is the date. It's 2018. It goes to March 1st or March 2nd and it starts uh, in early February and it just cycles through. Okay, so what you can see is the thickness in meters of the ice and you can see most of the ice is only two meters or so thick. The amount of, the only thicker ice is stuck up against the Canadian archipelago. Whereas before it used to cover, we'd have multi-year ice covering a large part of the basin. So the stuff is going very quickly. This is the region where a lot of this ice got cleared out 
uh, very very quickly because of of because it was there 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 was a huge war mass of there was basically an atmospheric river the jet stream when it becomes so wavy there's a lot more north south motion depending on you know if you're if if it's wavy like this you're going high up into up north and then you're going descending to much lower latitudes and then you're going high up north so that vertical motion of warm humid air is cutting into the arctic doing a number on the ice disrupting the jet streams polar vortex as i'll explain in more detail um, this of course is one of my favorite sites to go to google earth null school and here we're just looking at the um, so if you click here to get the menu we're looking at 250 we're looking at the winds in the atmosphere at 250 millibar pressure that's the jet streams and this is what we see here so look how convoluted it is remember this is supposed to be acting as a wall the warmer air goes up into the ridges the colder air comes down into the troughs but this is completely broken this this pattern now if we go up even higher into the atmosphere we hit the stratospheric the polar vortex in the stratosphere now look at this okay so we've got a big ring here we've got another loop here we've got another one here they're like gears that are all meshing okay this is broken and uh very very broken and uh, as i'll show um it's basically you get these sudden stratospheric warmings which come and cut the vortex and i'll show a possible mechanism for for generating these sudden stratospheric warmings um, in a detailed um, peer review paper which came out just recently it covers the summer a period of time in the summer but we're seeing the same thing happening in the winter with these excursions of very warm humid air these atmospheric rivers going into the arctic and we're seeing that uh, you know we're expecting um well let's have a look at the um that first of all let's go back you know so what did we have what sort of pattern i can click here go back a day okay so what you can see is you know you can go back and see how these loops are changing the num so you know the number of different loops is important the energy that's distribution so this is much faster wind um this is much weaker one here you know strong so there's two strong ones this is the strongest by far because it's much wider here much uh more intense and you can go back here and see how the energy is just okay so now we have primarily one oval here this is back uh in um february 7th february 6th and so on you can go right back this is now you know this was more circular right there's still a loop here with some energy but most of it is here Okay, and we can just, you can have a look at that and just go back, keep going back. Okay, so what sort of is determining the, um, this vortex in the stratosphere, in the upper atmosphere? How does it relate to the jet streams um, at the top of the troposphere? I'm going to talk about all of these things and explain um, some of the mechanisms that connect them together. Um, but right now, if I go now, that brings us back to now. Um, if we want to look at the surface and look at the temperature, okay, so what you can see here is, and rather than at the surface, um, let's just go a, a couple meters above the surface here. Okay, there's a difference here, but you can, you can check out both. But what, you know, if we go forward in time, okay, to the um, projection, look at this. It, it, completely comes into the Arctic here. Look at this. I can see some green coming right here, clear across the Arctic. Okay, so this is some of the, this is some of the, the this idea of these, the, you know, these very warm, like what, how, how we've got complete darkness in the Arctic. How do we get above zero? You know, the green is, is temperatures above zero. You can click on it to get the reading, 3.3 .3 degrees here. Okay, uh, slightly above zero. Um, I can advance forward, okay, and now it's coming up here to the Russian island, and there's no data here. Um, Three-hour increments can, can be done also. There's not a lot of change on the three-hour increment because it's always dark there. You know, if you're in an area that's sunlit, then you can see a lot more change in the three-hour increments.
Okay, so um, so what's happening here? Okay, what's what's going on? Okay, so I'm going to talk about this paper, and it was submitted August 22nd, accepted January 30th, and then it was published online uh, February 13th, so just over a week ago. Okay, now poleward up gliding of the Siberian atmospheric rivers over sea ice heat up the Arctic upper air. Okay, so this is one of the mechanisms by which we're getting tremendous amount of heat transport into the Arctic. Okay, we know that Arctic amplification has been going on for quite a while because the sea ice is decreasing exponentially. The snow cover in the spring is decreasing exponentially. The Arctic is getting a much darker place. So in the summers, it's absorbing a lot more sunlight. A lot less is being reflected because it's a much darker place. A lot more is being absorbed into the oceans and on the permafrost, the dark permafrost, and it's heating the Arctic. Okay, it's, it's, it's this albedo effect is a huge feedback. We're also, it's a lot, the air is a lot warmer in these, we're getting these, so the jet streams have slowed down. You get very, very large amplified troughs and ridges, and these ridges carrying warm, humid air are going right up into the Arctic, and they're disrupting, they're displacing colder air, which is incoming further south, so that will cause more waviness of the jet streams. This is a huge mechanism to bring heat into the Arctic and cold air out of the Arctic, which is equally warming the Arctic. So what happened in this paper? Okay, um, and I'm going to go in, in detail um, into this paper here. Okay, and I'll continue it in the next video. So they, they, they did upper air measurements with radio sons. Okay, radio sons are balloons that are tracked by radar. You send them up. Now they did it from an icebreaker, and this icebreaker moved towards the pole. It went from an ice free region through the edge of the ice and into a region of thick ice. Okay, then it talks about, so they did actual direct measurements of air temperatures and humidity measurements and so on at different levels through the atmosphere, both over the sea, closer to the coast, this is over the Laptev Sea, and then at the ice edge and deep into the ice edge and into thicker ice. It was done in August of, of uh, 2013. Okay, now it talks about the widely accepted mechanisms for tropospheric lower atmosphere warming in the summer over the Arctic, Arctic amplification. This shows a process. There's also, we know there's a lot of heat transfer into the Arctic from both the Pacific Ocean, uh, from the Atlantic Ocean, also over land. So this is looking at a specific case over Siberia, but keep in mind, I'll talk about the wider ramifications of this because we're seeing this right now in you know, towards the end of February in 2018, we're seeing this warming of the Arctic above zero, the North Pole, in the middle of winter, and the mechanisms are heat transport from lower latitudes, and the, th this is a very important thing because the ice characteristics are different now. The heat wasn't transported up as much when there was sea ice, and now that there's gaps of the ice around the coastlines, um, and uh, the ice isn't extending out further into the ocean, the Pacific, so there's a lot more heat transport that is able to go on, and I'll talk about that. Um, so they call it um, Siberian atmospheric rivers here. So what happens is you get the warm, humid air coming in, and it hits the ice. Now over the ice, there's a cold air dome, okay? so the the warm air can't penetrate it, the cold air is denser, so the warm air goes up, it, it up glides over the colder air. Now it's laden with moisture, that water vapor condenses into droplets and then forms the clouds, but it releases huge amounts of heat which causes further uplift. So it keeps going up higher and higher into the, it heats up the mid troposphere. And we see the polar vortex coming into play because it is split in these cases um, so we need to look at all of the processes, the temperature contrast between the land, between the ocean, and between uh, the ocean when it's covered with Arctic, with sea ice. So stay tuned for my next uh, update video.